Hi guys. So today I want to show you like one cool trick with grease pencil and by any means it's not anything really rev revolutionary. It uses all the mm, things we're, which existed in Blender and grease pencil in particular for many years. So it just uses the fact that you're actually drawing in 3D space and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, what I'm talking about is like dealing with the mm, with the architecture, especially with the stuff that appear like repeatedly, uh, like for example in that case like windows. But you can think in the same way about the fences. I don't know, like uh, you know, you you know what I'm talking about, like the the, the things which like f are quite similar to each other, and at some point. Um, you have to deal with it. I mean, you have to sit down and draw it. So if you are like a big studio, you can hire a lot of people and like, come on, draw me some windows or something like that. But if you are a one man or one woman studio like me, then you need to think creative and out of the box and try to find a way to make your life a little bit easier and you work a little bit faster. So. Let me show you what, I, what I've got. I mean, so far I've got this building like with uh, quite crazy camera angle. And the idea is to create like, I don't know, like one, two, three, four floors, like, and to fill it with, with some windows, with some ornaments on it and s or stuff like that. So it would be like pretty time consuming, I guess. Like notice that I already have my camera set on on a, on a certain angle. By the way, it has some kind of uh, pretty crazy uh, focal length. It's like 20 millimeters, so it distorts all the angles pretty much. Mm. Well, I've got this sketch, which I uh, have drawn with a little help of my guide system. I mean, you could probably use some 3D as a references if you want that or you can use the the guides from the mm, from the grease pencil i like to use my guide system so it's just a pretty simple grid made with grease pencil and ri modifier and yeah it helps me to get the perspective right and notice that my sketch is completely flat right it it's it's not it's not actually mm, it, it it's not it's not 3d it's flat and um it was drawn uh, with uh, drawing plane set to view, so it 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 points towards the camera. Okay. Okay, and let's say if that I would like to have, um, mm, I don't know, like those those windows with quite a lot of detail. Let's actually create or not create. Let's copy this uh, mm, grease pencil object. Why I am copying it mm, instead of creating a new one? Because I want the want the same set of material I I had in the previous one, so I got like one material for the stroke, one material for the just the fill, and one material for stroke and fill um, combined. So yeah, I'll just rename it to something like window. And yeah, and I will delete the existing layer and create a new one. So I kind of have a new blank grease pencil object with the uh, same set of uh, of materials right uh, I probably would like to uh, turn down the opacity of my sketch a little bit down and at this point I don't think I need the guide system I just need to see more or less what I'm doing okay so let's go to our newly created uh, or newly copied uh, window object and right now I would like to change my drawing plane from view to front and to see the things more, more clearly I would like to activate the, uh, the canvas so yeah I activated the canvas but nothing actually showed up and the reason for that is that uh, I'm in the rendered viewport shading mode so to see all the cool stuff like onion skins and canvas and fade the in interactive inactive sorry inactive layers and stuff like that, I need to be in the 
in the material preview mode, okay? And as you can see, the canvas is right here. And still it's kind of, I don't know, barely visible. So if you want to change it, you can easily go to the, um, to the data um, mm, tab in the, in the properties panel and change the color. It's hidden like somewhere here in the viewport display. So if you go like with something more saturated, you can right now easily see the, mm, the, the, the canvas, okay? Um, like, so this, this is not necessary, but I will actually move my, my object into the place where the, uh, where the, where the first window would sit. Okay. So probably it's, it's, it's not that important, but yeah, let's keep it kind of clean or whatever. Mm. And right now I'm going to, I, w I want to go to the front view. Let's send cursor to select that. I have like a uh, lock view to 3D cursor, so so it's easier to draw for me like this. And let's start to draw a window, actually. And I will do it with, actually with three layers. So the first layer would be, um, yeah, the first layer, why my, uh, Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I need to uh, use my material, uh, like stroke material. Um, okay, so uh, probably I would like to have uh, pen pressure for radius and I don't want to use pressure for strength. Uh, yeah. I'll start with something which resembles like the, the frame of the window, okay? I want to go for some kind of old schoolish stuff and I'd w I don't want to be super precise I want to be rather sketchy but this is like these are like artistic choices so it's totally up to you so probably it would be like good idea to use some references but I'll just try to figure it out like some kind of old school ornaments uh, which would be like uh, pretty uh, hard thing to uh, you know to uh, to draw multiple times uh, and yeah well can't say I'm s very happy with this but it, it does the job okay let's let's put something at the bottom as well yeah reference are cool kids use references um, okay let's say this is this let's say this is the 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 frame of my window okay and then I would like to create a new uh, grease pencil layer and put it on the bottom of a stack I will lock the one with the with the frame and I will draw the window by itself so I don't know maybe something like like this You can always turn off the uh, the frame layer. So as you can see, I'm super sketchy here, but you can like take all the time you want to create this because more or less you'll be creating just a uh, one window instead of like I don't know twenty or forty. So yeah, got it. Right now, what I want to do is to note that my the the frame is locked and I unlocked the the layer which the window sits in and I will just push it a little bit back actually I could turn off the proportional editing sorry and yeah let's move it a little bit backwards okay so right now I already have some cool effect but the thing is I don't want for example supposedly it should there, there should be a wall in here right so Mm, yeah, I would like to. I don't want this part to be to be visible. So, like to hide it, I will just create like the mm, the third layer in between. Let's go to front view. I could probably because I'm like right now I'm in the uh, dr the drawing plane's front, so I could draw it from the perspective. 
Well, let's draw it from the perspective. I will use it like the only fill material for that for, for, for this. So yeah, I'll just I'll just do something like let's go to front. Let's be serious. Okay. Yeah. Don't have to be uh, like super precise precise. But you can be if you want. Yeah. So right now I have this kind of 3D-ish hand-drawn window, okay? And it sits more or less where I wanted it to sit. Maybe I could still, like, if I unlock the other layers, I can still, like, make it a little bit, for example, uh, larger. It's good to use, like, Gizmo for this because, um, so, generally I activated Move, Rotate and Scale uh, object Gizmos because it's good to, um, if you are moving the objects around and you are planning to move the camera a little bit, it's uh, um, good to make conscious de decision when, when, when it comes to moving objects. Okay, I've got this little window with a um, lot of details and right now what can I do with it? I mean, I could probably use array modifier and do it like this. Um, you see that I'm a little bit uh, off the, uh, I mean the, the windows are okay, but the, the sketch is a little bit off the perspective. So I can, hmm, I can actually tweak it a little bit uh, in sculpting mode. Yeah. Uh, Using array modifier always is a it's it's always a cool thing because if you will um, for example if you will you would um, decide that you want to uh, change the look of of the window like for example the like make it make it like more uh, I don't know mm, clean or something like that then you just you just you just need to to, to work on this one um one window right and th the rest will will will, will follow because you are using the array modifier um if you would use the second array modifier and instead of uh, using it on um mm, along the x axis and in s and uh, instead you will use like the z axis like minus 20 s something like in my case then you are really saving a lot of time. Um, I don't know, like, um, mm, as you can see, they are kind of reacting for the camera angle. So this one, because normally you could, it's, it's as I said, it's not nothing revolutionary. You could probably do it in After Effects or even in Animate, whatever, like, in every software that you can turn things around along uh, along different axes or distort them by some kind of i don't know like add-ons or something like that but uh, if they are completely flat that the illusion is a little bit off for example because there are almost no difference be between this window and this window right they are just completely flat and 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 here we've got this uh, additional cool um mm, additional cool uh, uh effect which which in case of such a crazy uh, camera angles works pretty pre pretty cool for me uh, as you can see there is like part of the windows uh, showing up here so what i would what i would like to do is probably make the mask a little bit bigger so i will just draw it with my material yeah this is the right one so if I'll draw it in here, um, oh, and I messed up everything because I'm using, actually, I'm using relative offset. I don't want to use, probably I don't want to use relative offset. I want to use constant offset. And yeah, and right now, right now I'm cool. So if I will add some details in here, uh, well, I should do the same thing for the, mm, for the second array. So instead of relative, I use const constant offset and move it along the z-axis right okay so by adding uh, you know like stuff in here I can kind of build a wall so 
And if you are happy with it, you just need to, you know, like um, uh, apply the modifiers and then you can really like erase all the stuff that it's, it's unwanted. And yeah, like f probably I saved a lot of time, you know, by, by doing it. And if you if if you would like decide to create all the walls in the 3D as well, then uh, uh, then uh, you can use some camera movement and it's even cooler than that's what I did in the video. So the camera moves and like it kind of reacts like the 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 the, the angles of the um, of the windows kind of react for for everything. That is, it was pretty much the same workflow with the gate in the front. Where, where instead of drawing all the metal things, you know, one by one, I just used like array and, and distorted it a little bit like after applying it. So, you know the drill. Use the fact that you are working in the 3D space to save some time. Because for example, if you have sli some scene with a huge city and a lot a lot of windows but still you 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 need some diversity uh, between like w w when 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 the camera is on a certain angle um, then feel free to use like all the blender can give you i mean for god's sake you are drawing in the 3d space how cool is that okay guys so it's all for today Hope it was a little bit helpful and enjoy your life and enjoy your work. Goodbye.